What is the meaning of life? Deep question. Let's see if the AI comes back with an answer. It's planning its next move. It's you know, thinking really deeply. What is the meaning of life? We can see some of the reasoning or the model's thinking as it's coming back. It's trying to think deeply about what I just asked. Let's talk about how AI models work. You can think about them like super intelligent, general purpose API endpoints. Just like you would integrate with Stripe to handle payments, or maybe Twilio to send text messages, AI models allow you to solve basically any task through an API call. The biggest difference though, you are not guaranteed to get the same results every time. With traditional software, there's been a developer who's handwritten all of the code for every single path. So if you give a program some input, you run it again, you're gonna get the same output. But AI models are just not this way. They're probabilistic instead of deterministic. This means that there are many different paths that the model might take, even given the exact same input. For example, let's go over to cursor and I'll ask, what is the meaning of life? Respond in one word. Let's see what it says. What does the AI model think? Purpose. Okay, I could agree with that. Let's, let's do another chat. Let's say, what is the meaning of life? One word, same input basically, hit enter. Purpose again, okay. So I might start to build a mental model that if I ask the same question every single time, I'm always gonna get the same result, right? Not necessarily. Let's make another new chat and let's actually explicitly pick the model that we wanna use. So I'm gonna use pro tip here. I'm gonna use command slash and it opens our model picker. And rather than using auto, I'm gonna pick a very specific model here. Let's do uh, a non-reasoning model, which we'll talk more about later. I'm gonna use Claude for Sonnet here. I'm gonna say the same question. What is the meaning of life? One word. Experience. Interesting. So it's not purpose. Is it purpose or experience? I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> the point of showing this is that these models are really good at predicting the next word in a series. They're not deterministic. We cannot guarantee that we're gonna get the same result every single time. Even running the exact same prompt for the exact same model might give a different answer. So as you saw, I changed models. And you might've thought, how do you know when to use which model? Different models vary in their intelligence, their speed, their cost, and even their area of expertise. While some models are fast and cheap, they might not be able to solve these deeper technical problems which require a bit more thinking. Other models are slower and maybe more expensive, but they can really think and work on problems for significantly longer, especially on more complicated tasks. So for example, back in cursor, again, command slash, open up this model picker, I'm gonna pick GPT-5 and you see this brain icon. This brain icon means that it's a reasoning model, a model that can think for longer. That's gonna allow it to do more complicated, maybe finding bugs in the background or planning out a very complicated feature that a faster, cheaper model might be not the right fit for. Now, the ultimate goal is a model that is both incredibly smart, extremely fast, and very affordable. And honestly, there are some amazing models today and they're only getting better. Especially for building software, the current models are very, very capable of handling a variety of coding tasks. We have new models being released every month and the state of the art in AI is just continuously being redefined. It's a great time to be a developer. This means that you're gonna see even smarter models that are more capable of solving coding problems and just more tasks for building software as the capability continues to improve. You can also interact with models in different ways or modalities. For example, I have this image of a mock-up and maybe I wanna paste this into our input in cursor, and I can hover over it and see this here. And I can say, let's build this mock-up. Another fun thing here is I don't even have to type perfectly. I can have typos and the model generally understands what I'm saying. So I can hit enter and we're gonna let this model kind of cook in the background as we're working. We have text inputs, we have image inputs, we have audio inputs. I could even talk into the model using some speech to text tools and also video too. The quality of models just continues to improve rapidly. 
and the functionality of the models improves at the same time. So video generation models, honestly, were not very good just a few years ago, but now, as you can see, they're actually quite realistic. That's a lot of progress in a couple of years. For building software, different modalities might look like pasting in mockups here, or maybe working with the AI together to define a plan. Maybe you wanna vocally just talk through the plan and kind of go back and forth. But I've found attaching images to be really helpful for more of the front end and design type of things. Or even if your design or your UI is just a little off, maybe the spacing or the colors just aren't perfect, it's a nice way to get feedback back to the AI model for what you're trying to build. Now, if we go back into cursor, we can see that agent run where we pasted in the mockup. We see that it's thinking, it's writing some code that we can review, it's actually fixing some of the linter errors for us. Now, don't be overwhelmed if this seems like a lot. We're gonna cover agents in a future chapter and we're gonna go way more in depth on these. But the nice thing here is you can see that you can paste in images and the model can generate code based on that mockup. Now, before we get into how to use these models effectively, I really want you to understand their limitations. So let's dig into that more in our next lesson.